Hey everybody, welcome back to Dungeon of the Mad Mage. This is session 36. Um, and Return of the Nut Button. <laughs> Return of the Nut Button. Zach is back home, safe and sound, which is wonderful. We're very pleased. But I want to play some D&D, so I am uh, going to not talk to these fools, and I'm going to jump immediately into a recap of what Ouch. happened last time in the Dungeon of the Mad Mage. The party began to move into the narrow tunnels leading northeast from the Garden of Cocoons towards the sound of gushing water. The damp tunnels twisted and rolled, shrinking to almost claustrophobic tights at certain points and then belling back out again. All the while, small dri dripping stalactites showed the wear of time. Eventually, the party made it to a cave with a large column in it. Piled around the walls of the cave were neat stacks of mostly humanoid-looking bones, all stripped clean and covered in tiny teeth marks. Moving forward from here, the party found themselves at a crossroads. To the northeast was a large cavern, draped in masts, rigging, and tattered sails. In the center of the room, the stone floor pushed up, rising to form a natural cauldron, burbling with water. To the northwest lay a smaller cave, where natural geysers surged with sprays of water in a rhythmic cycle. After another of Matashtai's divination katas pointed northwest, the party chose to investigate this direction, and found on the other side of the geyser chamber an immense cavern, covered with bright, platter-sized seashells, waterlogged furniture, and large pools of water. As the party entered, rising up out of these pools of water on the backs of giant crabs was the River Coven, a group of seaweed-haired, aquamarine-skinned sea hags, gurgle brine, coral black, and cauldra cuttlefingers, introduced themselves to the party and welcomed our heroes to their humble abode. More importantly, strapped to the forelegs of one of the giant crabs, was a pair of greaves, the first of the rel relics Matashtai had come to this world to find. The sea hags were quick to open dialogue, attempting to make the party feel comfortable and establishing friendly relations. Gurgle Brine, the eldest sister, led the conversation, discussing the current political environment on the Sargoth level. The sisters talked about the Drow House, the Legion, and themselves, and eventually the conversation turned to the question of what could the party do for the River Coven? The Coven desired a return to the olden days, the quiet days, without the annoying conquests of the Drow. Gurgle Brine attempted to secure the party's involvement in removing the Drow with promises of treasure or friendship. The Sea Hags even went so far as to give suggestions on how to deal with the Drow, citing stealth, frontal assault, or alliance with the Legion as options. The party entertained the idea, but did not commit. Instead, they attempted to negotiate for the Greaves, eventually settling on the idea of trading the circlet of the two-headed king in exchange for Matashtai's artifact. The Sea Hags seemed willing, but they also seemed like they didn't want to just let the party off the hook. To first establish trust, the Coven asked the party to hunt down some nearby demons, which they promised would be rewarding <coughs> in its own right and then the hags would be willing to trade. The party agreed and left the hags via a new northeastern route. On their way back to the river, or on the way back out of the river coven's domain, they found the hags' other servants, a small tribe of grimlocks waiting in the shadows. Finding themselves back at the river, the party ran into another of the coven's perimeter defenses, a beach of tiny seashells that had the power to confuse and then act as quicksand dragging intruders down into their depths. Thankfully, the party was able to avoid this pitfall, at least somewhat. But now they found themselves on a riverbank without means of transportation. Fortunately for them, Ashes had previously paid the ferryman, and the skeletal creature now arrived upon its gondola. The other members of the party paid their fare, and the creature, at the party's behest, took them northeast along the river, past the first riverbank they came to. Just as the party began to fear they had gone too far, a second bank came into view. 
The party beached here, paid the ferryman for a future ride, future ride, and then, after summoning Wolf to aid them, headed northward through a small tunnel. Here they found an ancient pirate treasure, as well as the two demons guarding it. Combat ensued as the invisible Barl Gura attacked, initiate, initially entangling the party with hellish twisting vines. Fortunately, the party was able to break through and focus the two demons down, but not before one of them seriously injured Matashtai. That said, when the dust settled, it was the party victorious and the demons dead. Well, as dead as demons can be in this realm. Afterward, the party searched the pirate <laughs> right. <laughs> Afterwards, the party searched the pirate treasure, finding a large hoard of plunder and a crimson ring, warm to the touch. One more victory and one more reward for our heroes. And that is where we find ourselves. So, toss you guys back to the Sargoth level real quick. The lip on over here. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Wow, we we up in that top right corner. You guys way up in that top right corner. Um, and once again, if you would like to refer to your handy dandy map, uh, you can see the amount of ground you guys have now covered, which is pretty extreme. Now yeah, that river got a lot of it uncovered. Wow. So. What would you all... <laughs> like to do well i would assume that we just want to make a beeline back for the hags yeah i think that um I'm probably at least I, I, can, I think i can assume that somebody is going to want that i would like to <laughs> beeline back to the hag we beeline uh, back to the hags you expect that jay that makes no <laughs> sense um i am gonna probably use a couple Charges of the staff to heal up, so just in case things don't go well. Damn, he's stepping the wind. Smacked around a little bit, didn't you? I guess I guess so, man. Yeah, he got smacked around. By, by a little bit, I mean a lot. Yeah, I got, I got a little slapped. Kind of a lot of bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's turn on our floor three Sargoth music. You done good, kid. That's a good heal. That's a pretty good heal. That's a that's a decent heal. Not a bad heal. Take take above average. Ooh, okay, okay. I can live with this. I'm a little little scraped up, but you looking a lot better. All this stuff reset. Weird. All right, fantastic. So once, twice, thrice, Matashtai heals himself with the Staff of Healing. Um, and we are good to go. Now, what is the plan? My mini Back gonna... to the hags. Yeah, back I think we're going to take the gondola the back to the hags. All right, so um, you begin. I'm going to, uh, before we go back, I'm going to telepathically speak to Wolf and I'm say, uh, well, I think we're heading back now, uh, and I don't think you'll fit on the boat, so I'm going to dismiss you so you don't have to crawl back through that tunnel there. That would be appreciated. Thanks for your help. It's kind of like inclines his head at you. Just... Pop! Pop. <laughs> he is dismissed. All right, so you all head back south through the tunnel. Um, the winding, twisting, rolling, bounding tunnel. Um, and you make your way back down to the ferryman, who is still there, waiting at a... Oh, you guys are waiting for me to move you? Okay. I, I didn't know. <laughs> it, was like, it was like a 30-foot walk. Look, and you, know, <laughs> you guys are like, let's go halfway across the map. Dude, start moving around, jerking all over the place. And I'm like, I'm like, stop moving, I will move you. Stop moving, I will move you. Stop moving, I will move you. We grouped up for you, bro. Five minutes if later. I see this in a two-by-two, two, I'm assuming there's some fast travel in <laughs> Jesus. All We're right. learning, Jeremy. Jeez. Fantastic, fantastic. So, um, the ferryman, if, if that is what you all would like to do, uh, the ferryman take you all 
fast travel you on back down to the previous location. Um, and it is uh, not quite fast travel, but it is a quicker trip because the ferryman uh, continues to push the gondola along, but you're also carried by the somewhat tame current. Um, so, you come down, and the uh, the ferryman kind of pushes in to the beach. The the soft seashells here, right? The tiny, itty, itty bitty black obsidian seashells. Kind of, he just rolls up, and you watch, right, as as the portion around the boat that crests up onto the beach. More of the seashells move away than the boat actually pushes. <laughs> Uh, uh, thank, thank, thanks for the trip. Catch you later. Do we prepay again? Is this how we keep the meter running? <laughs> I can't. Is it is it uh, impolite to just keep paying him and Ex hoping he shows up? <laughs> Ex yeah, I'm sure he gets so many customers down here. Ezra will flick him a gold coin. At least yeah, whatever. I pay him another gold. Coin. Fuck it. Yeah, I'll give him a gold, too, just in case. Oh, this guy's making bank. It's almost as good as Dernan. Absolutely. No, Dernan's made. Well, Dernan should have a more <laughs> annoying obstacle good. he'd make more money. <laughs> this is Dernan's brother who died down here. Wow, dark. <laughs> to the hags! <laughs> All right. To the hags. Uh, so, you guys want to fast travel over to the hags? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll fast travel. That's fine. <laughs> Damn it. I was almost there. You jerked me back. I'm not going to grab you guys until you're still. <laughs> we can do this for a long time. I can just sit here for the rest of the night. <laughs> oh. Okay, still doesn't count if you're all on the same fucking tile. <laughs> oh. We are one. Goodness All gracious. Right. Everyone move one tile. No, go back, go back, go back, go back. Everyone right. move one tile on the count of three. Which direction? <laughs> you, this is the secret. Two. Three. I didn't move. Two of well, you did not move. What a <laughs> bitch. <laughs> what? I tried to press the button. I wasn't focused on the window. All right. <laughs> So, uh, you make your way down the shadowy tunnels back towards the Night Hag's Cavern, past the kind of little um, fishman altar that the Grimlocks <clears throat> have set up, right? Um, and even past them, right? You still see them shirking in their uh, dark corner of the caves. Um, they pay you no mind, uh, though they obviously know that you're there. Um, and then you make it back into the thing. We're actually missing this one. Cool. So, um, you all come back into that large cavern with, uh, for the, that is the home of the sea hags. Um, you can hear, uh, the geysers in the distance, right? Um, the large kind of spiral dinner platter sized seashells marking the walls and you hear a hustle and bustle within the cavern right uh you hear a low like humming does it sound okay like a spell or a ritual or uh, it sounds like someone humming. <laughs> hey guys, it sounds like someone's humming. <laughs> Damn, someone's yeah. humming? Let's go check. Oh, shit. Thank As God you guys... for Ezra. My ears don't work. <laughs> As you guys kind of like come in, you see off to one side, uh, um, Coral Black is uh, off to one side, kind of like lounging and fiddling with her seaweed hair. She... Uh, she sees you enter into the cavern, right? Um, but she doesn't 
really acknowledge your presence. Um, and then you can hear the humming is coming from the southwest, uh, where you see Cauldra Cuddlefingers, who rounds as you kind of approach, and she says, she kind of waves her cuddlefish fingers at you. Um, <laughs> right? And she appears to be bustling around um, a couple of different um, tables and instruments, right? And she says, oh, you're back so soon. It's good to see you again. Oh, oh, um, Gurgle is busy for the moment. She'll be back shortly, though. Uh, would you like some monkey bread? And she turns. She has this big platter, right? And as soon as she does, she says, and before you ask, yes, it is. Damn, real monkey? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> no, I think I'm good. Well, how'd you get a real monkey down here? Oh, trade <laughs> secrets. Actually, we're not that far from Skullport. And uh, sometimes things fall off the back of the ship as it may be. Mm, mm, like oh, yeah, that, uh, that uh, five finger supply, yeah. Uh, yes. Would you like? Okay, cool. uh, I'll pass. Thank you, though, for the generous offer. Oh, it's really quite delicious. You're missing out. And she kind of like plucks up. And it looks like bread of some sort <laughs> uh, i'm really getting like hannibal lecter vibes from this and, and i don't like it she just kind of like <laughs> plops it into her mouth and squishes and she's kind of got these jowls so the whole the whole thing is overly caricatured right um but she says oh well if i can't entertain you uh it will be just a few minutes i'm sure and then gurgle will be back i would say coro might be able to assist in entertaining you she kind of like shouts across the room while she says that right <coughs> but she's always ever so busy and coral's literally just laying there on like a waterlogged futon with with her giant crab like next to her like one big claw like just in the air and the other one like picking little like barnacles off of her back oh uh, all right I mean, um I we could just sit here and like take a short rest yeah we could just hang out does anyone need a rest we can just hang know. out I mean, I could take a short rest to get me some key points back, and I could use a hit dice to get back the rest of my health. I mean, alright, whatever. Short rest or whatever, or she gets back, whichever comes first. I can say, before before you guys get too in-depth on the debate of should we short rest or should we not, in about two or three minutes, right, um, the figure of Gurgle Brine begins to lift up out of one of the nearby pools, um, and as it does, right, she looks around and she kind of like shakes her hair, right? And uh, it's all, it's all crazy, like uh, matted and pushed. Yeah. Um, and she's got this uh, kind of like slash across her forehead um, off to one side. Um, and she kind of like is puffing a little bit. And she yells immediately. She yells, Carl! Caldra! And then she turns and she sees all of you oh you're back well yes <laughs> hello just one moment and she kind of like she doesn't right but fiddler stalks over towards cauldra and you see coral comes kind of rushing over on on chesapeake right and they kind of like huddle in the corner and whisper 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 for a few moments right um, and there's obviously some tension there, but then, uh, then they seem to resolve whatever it is they're talking about. And then, um, Gurgle turns, uh, actually all of them turn to you as kind of like a unified force. And Gurgle steps forward on Fiddler and says, well, you don't waste time, do you? It's quite quick work. I mean, a lot of other places to be exploring. Can't dawdle. We're, uh, also we're fishing. What was that? Oh, I said we're... also venturing. Ah, yes, you're exploring and venturing as, as one does. 
Yes, well. My apologies for being less hospitable than earlier. Still. No, no, we, we, we're, we're cool. We, we got uh, the niceties out of the way. Um, anyways, uh, we killed the demons. Killed. Ah, yes, well. As one does. And... Or doesn't. Treasure? Did you find yourselves handsomely rewarded, yes? We did. There was a, there was a good amount of treasure. Ah. Mm. And she kind of like does the evil, you know, like, mm, scenario, right? And what, she goes, uh... What, what, what you got going on there? What, 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 are you, what are you so worked up about? Ah, well. Old enmities still run strong. This is a dangerous time, and we are humble folk. Unfortunately, people seek to root us out of our their home. Can't have that happening, can we? I mean, I can understand why. Just look at this real estate. Mm. Yes, riverfront property and everything. <laughs> hmm. Well, well anyways, I guess Matt, uh, Matt's a little tired, so I mean, you know, anything we can do to help? Is it drow? We we, we already got a vendetta with some drow, probably. This particular problem has nothing to do with the drow, though that is still one problem we would love to have solved. Oh, looks like Matt's coming out of his meditation trance. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> cat was jumping everywhere. <laughs> Yes, well, I assume you're back for our deal. Uh, yeah, I'll, yeah. uh, I'll pull out the circle of blasting and, um, I'll walk it over to Fiddler, I believe his name was, his or her, their name. <laughs> the, the crab's name, yeah, sure. Fiddler, and, uh, Case I will hand over the dainty little uh circlet put it i'll, I'll rest it on it like puts out a claw right the big claw and it has like the little you know the, the little thumb, thumb spike thing claw. right basically right, I'll, I'll like i'll like slip it on ah yes that looks quite good we'll have to make a more permanent home for it in the near future but uh, i'm sure fiddler will love it um if you don't mind helping out with the greaves, not exactly very handy. Matt, you want to do the honors? Sure. Yeah, I could. I could help out with that. All right. <laughs> I go over and start pulling the boots off of this crab. <laughs> Something. You know, this is one. This is one of those weird scenarios where you never thought you'd be in. Where? Wait, you said greaves. So are they like? Shin guard type things? Yeah, they're more shin guard types. Okay. Now, they are pretty yeah, elaborate, so they do wrap hmm. around the majority of the leg, and they kind of come up over where your knee would be, right? Um, so, but they're, they don't enclose the foot entirely. Okay. Uh, try to get these off of this crab here. <laughs> let, here, let me doff this armor off this giant crab. <laughs> so, cr yeah. Crab wrangling. Crab wrangling. Um, so you go through the process. Uh, it, it actually doesn't take you terribly long, but uh, you pull the greaves off of Fiddler, um, and Gurgle just kind of nods. Yes, quite nice. A deal struck and completed. Two in one day already. Oh, we're ever so... so um, efficient so here I, I was i was thinking about something uh i do not feel confident in our ability to handle these drow on our own just from being in their presence it seems like they're very capable of handling themselves mm. um so i was thinking we're we're probably going to go visit azrog here pretty shortly uh, yes. and uh depending on how that how that encounter goes um, I think we might be able to maybe form a temporary alliance to maybe, I don't know, bolster some numbers to actually maybe attempt to 
take on the drow. Does that sound good? We are very interested in whatever progress you might make. I would caution you. Yeah. The Legion is uh, taciturn at any time, and recently they've uh, suffered several losses. It might take a bit more convincing for them to work well with you. Though I would say uh, they are more often than not quite hospitable towards visitor. Um, Azrock merely asks a tribute of some sort. What kind of, what kind of tribute, tribute does he about? generally ask for? Oh well, Azrock Blood. is a simple man. Whatever is deemed suitable at the current time and space, he understands that not all have the same means. Most he lets slip away with a simple vow of fealty. Not one of service, mind you, just one of uh, friendship and peace. Hmm. But uh, for those of, and she kind of like eyes you, of more obvious means, a gift of some value is expected. Though not Let's... great. Well, huh. wouldn't hurt to talk with him and see what he's asking for. Alter kind of pipes up and she just says, It's a small price to pay, really, for the safety and hospitality of the Legion. They're quite nice. After a fashion. All right, oh, I, gotta, well. I gotta assume they're nicer than the Drow. <laughs> Coral says, Oh, well, that's not very different. Agreed. Agreed. Well, uh, should we uh, get to looking for this legion? And which direction do they live in? We the legion is west <laughs> of here. Ah, uh, unfortunately, it depends on the direction from the river you go. The northern exit is more towards the drow side of territory these days. You head back mm -hmm. out to the south and across the river. Then west, you'll find your way. Or, of course, if you head back up to the northern bank and go down the river from there, you will find an easy purchase. Uh, do be careful in traveling that direction. There's a great, um, well, what do you call it? There's a great beast. Ruin beast? Is it a beast? In the oh. center. Some oh, locked really? up piece of dwarven architecture from millennia ago. This is an odd place. I'd be careful around it if I were you. <clears throat> is it haunted? Oh, well. Many things are haunted here. You said that's if we go out north and then come down into the mysteriously empty center of the map? Either way you go. <laughs> Once you start heading west towards the Legion, there's plenty of things that go bump in the night. Be careful. Yeah, right. And you can take that seriously, coming from a sea hag. Okay, well, cool. I guess let's go, boys. All right. All right. Uh, I kind of hold the greaves up and I say, good doing business with you. Yes, a pleasure. Do, do we need to wait 10 minutes for you to put them on? or? Oh, let's get away from the area. I was going to see if Ezra could clean them. Okay, all right, bye. Nice. So where, where are you guys actually, <laughs> where are you heading? You want to go into the mysteriously empty middle of the map? 
There's also the place to the south of here. There's the one south of France? That, haven't... that one early path. Oh, yes. Let's go explore that. So, exploring. Are you guys heading to the south? I as, scored. As you guys begin to head towards the south, Coral and Chesapeake actually, like, stand up from where they are. And mm -hmm. Coral, riding upon Chesapeake, um, skittering up to you. Oh, you're... Right? Oh, you're heading this way. I had business in our other chambers to attend to. I'll travel with you. Damn, that's ominous. Let's kill a... She, we're gonna have to kill a hag? How much experience do you think a hag's worth? Seven. S no. S seven. <laughs> seven. S seven. All right. S seven. So, um, you guys S seven. travel southward with mm -hmm. Oral and Chesapeake through the. As, as we walk, I'm gonna kind of talk to Ezra. I'm like, "You mind cleaning these off for me, real quick?" <laughs> as we walk, Ezra casts Prestidigitation and starts polishing his greaves. <laughs> There, so the greaves <laughs> actually themselves, uh, being magical artifacts, are uh, resistance to most things like rust or, or things like that, right? But they are still covered in, in goop, basically, like little strands of seaweed or other river, you know, um, foliage, um, vegetation. And, um, I mean, they're kind of smeared with random bits and bobs, so it takes Ezra a couple of castings to press the digitate up the leggings and then get everything actually smoothed over, right? Um, but simple enough to do while you all are walking south into the geyser chamber and then into the next section, which is the uh, Great Cauldron. And it's at this point, right, that Coral and Chesapeake head over to that cauldron um, and as they're leaving, Coral looks back at you, right? And she says It's been a pleasure Your direction is that way And she points to the the southwest at, And then she turns and she heads over to the cauldron right, And you watch, you right? Like, like Chesapeake like, walks right up like k -k 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 up over it and kind of like straddles it but like moves its body out of the way so coral can like lean down and look in that sounds that sounds very convenient maybe we should all get crab mounts yes we should yes we should <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, once Ezra's done I, um, I take back the greaves and kind of clap him on the back and said thanks friend by the way now well, that you that guys have kind of like yeah. seen this in action right there are a handful of the pools, the shallow pools from the other cavern that the the sea hags seem to come and go out of. There's a handful of those in this chamber. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how long would it take me to put the greaves on? Uh, it's a come it's a component of donning armor um so 1000 minutes realistically it probably takes you like a minute and a half to put those on because you just sit down strap them on or put them on strap 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 chink them tight make sure everything's working so putting them on does not take you very long attuning to them is a different matter yeah, it's fine. Uh, I don't really want to carry him around though, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put him on. Gotcha. Does it count as armor? Huh? Does no, it, it doesn't. It doesn't armor? count as armor. I'm just saying, okay. like, actively, if you're really curious about like how long it takes to put something yeah. that like that on, it does take some time, but it doesn't take. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure he wasn't losing a bunch of his AC now. Nope, he's not. <laughs> they count as boots, uh. basically. Alrighty, so, um, seemed pretty clear that we're not supposed to go up there and check that other room. Yeah, let's uh, let's 
let's How, just keep on. However, this way. you can do whatever you want. Yeah, well, can I don't we want to break the. I'm gonna grab a drink real quick. I mean, you can. There just might be consequences. <laughs> there might be consequences. So, you know, I don't like the c word. Too too bad we don't have a Grazitz in this party too. Yeah, too bad we don't have someone to ruin the campaign. Yeah. Ruin the campaign! <laughs> Ouch. That was a little cold. Was it? I mean, yes. he did teleport you guys. Multiple times. You did no ask reason. him to do it. Not multiple for, times for no reason. In fucking quick succession. For no reason. <laughs> no reason. Uh -huh. Zero reason. Didn't ask him to teleport you somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. It wasn't like, hey, take did us I to the milk hey, now. Just fucking rapid fire teleport us if it doesn't work. Just do it over and over again. Well, he didn't do it over and over and over again. Just try and kill us. He didn't try and kill you. The magic did. He cast teleport yeah, once. No, no he did not. Twice. Yeah, he did. Twice. Twice. Did suck. Oh well, he Sorry. cast it Twice. once to take you to Neverlight. Then he cast it. Uh, oh well, I no. guess. I guess yeah. Twice. Yep. I guess. Yeah, you're you're right. That's yeah, he good. used all, all three right. of his charges. Oh hey, this didn't work. You guys, you guys said do it. Uh, yeah, Get out yeah. my face. And no one told him not to. Absolutely. All right. Um, Bones is gone. Yeah, oh, Bones gosh. Bones disappeared. I, I walked off in a huff. I'm so angry over things so that I don't know. So you guys uh, head back down know. through the long winding <laughs> tunnels, through the Garden of Cocoons, and back up to this riverbank. Oops, sorry. It clicked me. Well, Where you yeah. find bones in a huff. Why, why are you huffing? I'm so huffed up I don't know. over this person named Grazitz, alright? I'm just fucking angry. What, what is this Grazitz? I'm, I'm mad. Apparently this owes you money? Oh, he owes you money. Having Grazitz owe you money would be a thing. Like God That damn. would be a thing. All right, so you know, I get some interest you don't want. What you had to do for it. You guys are back at the river, at the narrow bottleneck here at it's this shitty uh, raft. Kind of jetty. You have you had your shitty little raft is still here. Um, I say shitty little raft. It's a perfectly serviceable raft. It's it works. It's fine. It's well made, well bound. Let's hop on it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you hop on the raft. Where are you going? Oh, just that straight thing? across. Just straight across? Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Is oh, that you know, where we're that's going? That's the case. Hey, wait, wait. How far is this? I cannot jump it. I can jump this. Well, and you know Ezra can't. A few more levels and I could run across that water. <laughs> like, like, I can legit just clear that because I got an extra 10 jumping feet from a level. Oh, yeah. You should you definitely do that. Fucking our only strength person. <laughs> you should definitely do that. And not help the boat. And not, uh, not push the, the boat. So lame. So lame. No, it's fine. I got it. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys, make your way gone. over and into the other section. Across to the other riverbank. Pull the raft up onto the rocky beach. And there you go. You're now on the western bank. You see to uh, the north of you, door. right? You see a door. There's a another tunnel off to the north here, and then there is a tunnel leading west at this point. It's like a door there. What's that? A I door. think it's a door. Is okay. is a door? Let me let me hit y'all with that descriptive text. So okay. A wide, ornate stone door is embedded into the northwest wall and flanked by bas-reliefs of helmed dwarves, their faces chipped away by vandals. An inscription carved into the door's molding has also been damaged, rendering it undecipherable. I don't know what you just said, Mitch. <laughs> I was just giving you shit. I listen. Indecipherable. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. My bad. I listen at the door to hear, see if I hear anything. Uh, roll me a perception check. 
I get advantage because of heightened senses. For hearing? For hearing. You can roll the actual check. <laughs> He's just going to tell you that he gets you, advantage. You just click the ability. <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> Alright. Uh, 22. Wrong or something. Um, be like, Actually, no, you don't. You hear nothing on the other side. You hear the burble of the river river behind you. Is this that, uh, them ruins? Ruins? That the uh, eggs were talking about? Could be. Could not be. Alright. Uh, is the door locked? Oh. Ooh. The door. Does not appear to be locked. I kind of look back and shrug. And... Well, that's what we're here to do. Do some exploring. Exploring. Open the door. Lauren! All right. Um, you have to set yourself against the door, right? Uh, it is a large stone door. So you kind of have to heave and push, and there's a little bit of a grinding right before um, it kind of gives, and the whole door, it doesn't just swing open, but it does kind of like open. Um, and you find within another door. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Alright, <laughs> airlock boy, again. we're playing Rust! Everything remains unchanged, I open this one as well. Let, let me actually read through some stuff. No. Okay, alright. Okay. So, uh, t- Uh, the small antechamber before you is unadorned, though it does mimic the rather wide style of the door. The door on the far side is similarly flanked by dwarves whose faces and beards, again, have been chipped away. Okay. All right. Uh, I wish to open this door as well. Okay. As Ashes walks into the room and steps on the center of it, there's a loud katunk as the roof above him falls down on top of him. Ashes, I need you to roll a dexterity saving throw. Yeah, you got it. Can I roll to punch and stun the rocks as they <laughs> No! <laughs> this is one thing you shall not be stunning, my good sir. I oh, no. did oh, Ashes is oh, dead. No. Okay. I did it. A immense carved stone block is freed from its resting place in the ceiling above Ashes and falls down upon him. Roll that beautiful damage. Not everything's beautiful. And yeah, as okay. it slams down onto ashes, okay. a blow is delivered that would kill a lesser man. Um, That's hurtful. <laughs> oh God. Uh, but ashes is able to take the brunt of the blow, size, really. collapse to the ground, <laughs> right and. Is in pain. This thing is now on top of him. It has slammed him to the ground. He is prone, and he now has an immense stone block pinning him to the floor. Oh shit! I'm gonna get in there. I mean, I guess I'll get in there too. Exploring. Goddamn exploring. Uh, I'm gonna get in there. I'm gonna try and use Tamakiri to kind of like lever the lever. thing up okay. a little bit so he can get under it. Or out from under it. Anything else? 
Ezra used mage hand to assist. And uh, ten pounds. Five pounds. I go five like this. pounds. Ten ah! pounds. Okay. I take it back. You are a lesser man. <laughs> you. I, just, I mean, the I'm mage hand might be stronger than me. I'm just throwing this out there. <laughs> kind of fair. Ten pounds. Come on, that's that's help. Okay. Is well, it though? It so. is. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna need, uh, assuming that Ashes is also trying to free himself, I'm going to need athletics checks from Matashtai, from Bones, and one at disadvantage from Ashes. Ashes. Alright, can I have The mage hand with 10 pounds does not seem to aid much. Ezra thinks it helps. <laughs> okay. I, I oh think man, I'm so it, small. I don't really know. Oh, there it goes. Wow. Okay. Hmm. There is make, make some him take more damage. There's some clear leverage, right? Um, but as it is, the three of you are unable to move the block. Three and a half. And Ashes takes another six bludgeoning damage as okay. it continues right, to crush this. him. I hulk out. Okay. <laughs> so a after the failed attempt, Ashes is suddenly like, nope, and fuck this, that. This is like halfway involuntary at this point. Oh, okay. I love it. I love it. Like, yeah. yeah. Sure. Can I right, try can... and punch the stone and break it into smaller pieces? <laughs> you can try. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if I have anything else I can do to help. So aside from what I've already tried, you absolutely, you absolutely were making a difference, right? It's just the group check failed, right? So, so there is, you can move this block. Otherwise, I would not just be, I would, I wouldn't be letting you guys roll for it. I'd just be like, this, this mm -hmm. mofo is gonna die because he's getting crushed to death unless you guys do something else. I mean, we we get in there, but yeah. Um, <laughs> Like All right, uh, another... So I'm gonna keep on, I'm gonna keep on prying. Okay. Um, does your wolf form allow you any advantage on strength checks? Okay. Please. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, bones, are you gonna continue assistance? Yes. Okay. Uh, so Ezra, are you changing anything at all? <laughs> Maze Chan. Ezra was helping. Okay, he's helping. All right. Uh, athletics checks. Um, um I do have a sledgehammer. Might hurt him more though if we just try to sledgehammer the rock on top of him. Uh, maybe try that on. We'll, we'll try that for plan three. Okay. okay. Athletics checks for the three. And I just roll it normal because I assume yep, I'm still do. at disadvantage. Okay. Absolutely. Pretty it good. is agonizingly slow and painful and greatly now assisted by. Ash's involuntary transformation into his wolf form as he basically like he does the almost kind of like anime thing where he puts his arms underneath him and he kind of like pushes it up which gives Matashtai oh, that much more leverage to push Tonbokiri underneath and and actually like maneuver things as Bones just kind of like slams repeatedly into the side of the the stone trying to like topple I'm it helping. in the direction and eventually you guys actually do move the thing off of ashes it's less that you move it off of him and more that you succeed in unpinning him to the point to where he can roll out and then matashtai just like Woof, and bones steps away and the the whole thing just <laughs> clatters to the the ground um there's a small pool of blood right um from where ashes was laying there um, from the initial hit, right? You can see yeah, like, that was mine. Part that was of mine. your that... shoulder and down your back have basically just been horribly crushed. Um, My insides are not on the inside anymore. They're on the outside. Uh, right, so Ashes short will like, like still be on all four when he rolls over and start growling at the stone on the floor. Damn, yep. are you at half health? <laughs> Do we need to get away from you and hide? 
Uh, actually, <laughs> and that only happens in combat, though, if I'm remembering. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, I'm at that threshold. Yeah, he, he, he is at the threshold, but I believe that's only a combat effect. So, um, it's basically that. There's a big black uh, boulder now there in the center of the room. Damn, why can't we blind? There's a big white boulder there's a big granite boulder there's a big brown boulder there's a big turquoise boulder there's a big colored boulder not colored <laughs> oh god <laughs> wow way to way to be a dick about it <laughs> oh really Jesus. you gotta dig him for that for the what you said right before we were on camera look bro it's a boc a boulder of color yes or a, a, a stone slab of color. Not really a boulder, sorry. That's not um, as good. Okay, so. Monolith. Um, you have tripped a trap into cool. this well, room. Guess we're not going. Can we get past it? Is it yeah, th I mean, the there's. Yeah, room? absolutely. There's uh, room to squeeze past it and uh, move back towards the door itself. It's actually Do shaped. Does it look like and, other slabs that could be loosened? It's actually shaped and... more like that. Um, Is there like a enough... shitty tile ceiling? There doesn't look like there's enough room in the room for another slab to fall of the same size. Like it, it takes up a great portion of the center of the room. Does it look like the hole that was created by its loosening is being filled by a sibling? It does not. Cool, 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 cool. Well, you think that um, You want to take a yeah, little break? Really, you really took that ceiling tile. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I did. <clears throat> Shit. Um... A little embarrassing, just I might need a minute. <laughs> so I at, tap him with the healing staff. Is that is that the plan? You're gonna heal. While he waits a minute, I'm gonna go in and check it out. Okay. My superior cat like. Wow, that is an unfortunate That's... heal. I'm sorry, friend. <laughs> you should not no. be a dead boy. I don't really want to use the rest of the charges because it, then I can't fine. mask your uh, so a little bit of healing magic is used on ashes, and then he begins to quaff some potions. Yeah. Um, bones, you go about you inspecting the door itself. Um, roll me a perception check. Perceiving. 25. Oh, he sees everything. Okay. Um... What? The door itself, um, again, to kind of describe it, it is a thick stone door, right? Um, looks more like a slab than a door. And it is flanked by bas-relief car bas carvings of dwarves with their faces and beards chipped away. Um, the door itself does not seem to be trapped. Uh, it doesn't budge for you uh, it does appear to be locked in some way shape form or fashion though you don't see a keyhole um what would you like to do i'm sorry say that again so the door doesn't seem to be trapped uh -huh. um but it does it doesn't open it does seem to be locked in some way shape form or fashion but there is no but there's keyhole not there is a handle, like a little spot where you would hold to kind of like prize the door open. Um, uh -huh. But there's no key or mm. lock mechanism that you can see. Damn. Okay. Probably one of the magic doors. I leave. I say, Ezra! Ez Ezra! Ez yeah. Ezra! Hey, hey! There's, you got one of the magic doors. Okay. I think I don't, I don't really know. Come on in here. Um, no. And then I, I just turn around and leave. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Ezra will produce his magical key, and ah. with his mage hand, he will attempt to unlock it. There is no One keyhole day. for the magical key to penetrate. But it's and, magic. And therefore it I does will tap nothing. the door with okay. the magic key. <laughs> the, the magic hand floats in with the magic key and goes, funk. And nothing happens. I do it again. Tap. Tap. I do it again. Tap, 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 tap. <laughs> Okay, I give no, up. <laughs> I like how you saw where that was going. <laughs> so Just, is, all right, is there, then, well, is there anything? Don't know how to get through here. Guess I'll come back later. Well, I mean, I, I could try something. Are there hinges at all? No, none of the architecture that you see, none of the dwarven architecture that you see uses hinges. They're all okay. either sliding sections or the way the mechanisms work is the hinges are inside the actual doors themselves all right i guess we'll uh but i mean if you're if you were gonna bully the hinges you could try to bully the door or something like that well, i mean i've actually got if somebody has like some, uh, I'm not I, like I'm not trying to shoot down ideas or anything like all that. Right, I'm all right. Just it's describing just... what it actually is to you. Grasping at straws here. If someone's got some some pitons that we could use, I actually carried on the block and tackle, and I'm already in uh, wolf form. We could try to just rip this thing out the wall. I mean, I, I do have pitons. Maybe we should just try and go around. Or we could do that. You think, you think there's going to be another way in here? I don't think there's not going to be another way in here. I like the way you think. <laughs> All right. Let's explore in a different <laughs> direction. Okay. Uh, I, I would uh, recommend we go north, because if my memory serves... There was a passage that was leading south when we first boarded the raft, and that might coincide. If nothing else, we can at least confirm. All Sounds right, we'll check thing. it out. So, with that information, you all begin to head up the north easterly passage, and after yep, a short sure journey, does. you find yourself back at a familiar beach with a couple of drow-made rafts and push poles. Okay. All right, you want to go back <clears throat> south again now? All right, we go back south again. Okay. Turn south. So you guys, you, you literally, like, you round oh, the corner and you see it and you're just like, oh, yeah, okay. Yep. And you just, like, about <laughs> face and oh, walk right oh, back oh, around. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay. That's supposed to be Benny Hill theme. You come all the way down south. And uh, so go a little slowly through here for me. As you guys okay. begin to take Culture. these There's winding passageways, <laughs> um, no, it's just direction. like you guys are now traveling to new directions. So, um, as new you begin directions. to begin to Ooh. come to a uh, a T a intersection car. with a Damn, passage curving back to the northeast and a passage continuing south southwest. The tunnel's trying to. Which way you think bones, boy? I don't know. I take a good log hard and look at it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I sniff the air. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Roll me a I give him room. I, 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 push, I push Ashes back. I give him room. The men work. Roll me a perception check. I'm rolling. God, you need to calm the fuck down. God damn, I got to open this cheek. I did. Fuck. Um, okay. You actually do smell something on the air. You smell, um, you smell rot from the mm, south. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm, rot, yes. Like, Good things have always come from rot. Decay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's, there's mm -hmm. some dead stuff down there south now. I mean, that is some of the things that are precursors to being bones. Yeah, yeah, it's true. 
What did the hag say? No, that wasn't. Sorry, it wasn't the beast. It was a Dwarven Bermuda Triangle. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's check the rod out. Okay. So, um, as you move forward, again, uh, you see the tunnel to the south of you begins to bell um, out larger, right? Become wider. And then there's a little tunnel heading eastward. Um, that's quite a bit of a squeeze, and you can see it begins to kind of curve away. The smell of rot is coming from that direction, most definitely. Hmm, rot. Okay, so there's some dead stuff to the east there, boys. Well, do you do you want to well, check it? So far, if there's death in that direction, there's probably something that's causing it, so... Okay, so you guys you begin to that head that direction. <laughs> wow. Sure, absolutely. Okay, okay. So, um, you begin to move forward s south and then east again, past uh, down this winding tunnel. Um, before you oh come my god, to, it never goddamn ends. Before you come to another uh, larger cavern. This one's got some text. So, um, the floor here is stained red and black and is strewn yeah. with a dozen or so spent crossbow bolts. The cavern itself seems naturally made, though there <clears throat> is a purple spiral pattern on the southeast wall. I don't, I don't know what that means. I back up and get Ezra. Ezra, go first into this cavern of death. No, no. I, I, I push it forward forcefully. You need you need to work on your uh, your freaking adjectives there. <laughs> <laughs> like when you're when you're talking to Ezra, adjectives are very important. <laughs> I sneak up behind Ezra and I tie a rope around him as stealthily as possible. Ezra probably does not notice. <laughs> I now have him on a leash. <laughs> oh, That's going to work out well. <laughs> no, I joke. I don't do that. All right. Psh, we explode into the cavern of death. Explode into and the by, cavern of death. I mean, we walk out. We walk into out into the, the red and black stained cavern with uh, dozens of crossbow bolts across its floor. The stench of death and decay, right, um, is pretty strong here. But it's stronger still coming from the tunnel southwards. Oh, gross. Do I recognize the symbology? The purple spiral pattern? I don't think that's a word. Uh, I don't think that being roll an arcana for me. Uh, no, you do not. Sorry, Hans. What do you mean, so? I don't give a shit. That doesn't mean shit all to me. I'll leave. All right. I jot, I jot the symbol down. I'm okay. In, uh, in my book just to... uh, what are these it... dead bodies? Are these nothing? Ah, so uh, Bones begins oh, to head the down to those, the uh... next um, room. After a short uh, tunnel, you, you come out into another larger cavern. And you can see here, right, the source of the stench. Uh, as you step into the small cave, the stench itself is almost unbearable, though at least it is now identifiable. Three rotting corpses lay here, riddled with crossbow bolts and nasty puncture wounds. The bodies themselves are covered in patchy gray scales with large, broad chests, small ridges along their skulls, and long, long, sharp claws. They have an almost reptilian look, which is reinforced by their long tails. Um. To the southeast. Oh, you guys haven't moved. Yeah, okay. we, I mean, 
Well, I mean, you can, you can see the majority of the room, but you cannot see the entirety of the room. I will move in so that we can see the southeast. I allow him to move in to see the southeast. Um, so, as you kind of head in further, um, you can see kind of uh, over here uh, in a back corner of the room, embedded in the southeast wall is a large stone arch. It's keystone and basin stones, each bearing an engraving of an old man reaching out with a staff. Does it look similar to other arches that we have seen? Did it sound similar to other arches you have seen? It yes, it does, similar except to me. The, the icon instead of an old man has been like, a tree! Or Then absolutely, yes it does. Alright, who's the oldest? Alright, Ezra, you're the only one with the staff. Go touch that. You're the only one! What do you want me to do? I can't... I'm not an old man with a staff. Technically, I have a rod. That is so. true. Mm, technically. Technically, I'm a cat, so... I mean, I have a staff, but it's the healing staff. Do we really want me to touch that? <laughs> nah, I think Ezra should touch his staff to it. Yeah, I don't know yeah Ezra, touch your staff. To, to it. it. Uh, oh, yeah. I'll touch your staff. I mean, how about we use, uh, you know, something like a 10-foot pole so Fuck that off. we don't... I've already sacrificed two 10-foot poles to one of these. <laughs> I'm just concerned that we're throwing away equipment because one of the portals literally ate everything that we touched it with. I don't recall that. Right, or it rusted one. them. Another one, yeah. Maybe we should just jot down where this is since we haven't been able to use any portal since. Maybe this is the first one you can actually use. Uh, You're right. Ezra, give me your staff. Yeah. I need a staff! You have a staff in your bag. I do Call not! Oh, yeah. Actually, staff yeah. I, I, no, no, I do actually have a staff. I take out the oak staff. <laughs> God damn it, Zach. Why do you have God, an I oak have staff? Because you said it wasn't magic. From um, where? Mostly. Uh, 34? That's all that's notated on it, is 34. 34. So would that have been like floor 2? Hard to tell. Definitely not floor 2. Oh, 34. Oh, yeah. Easy. It's a quarter staff. Oh, I just have oak staff written. It's quarter staff. Whatever, I take it out. Okay. I have a dime staff, I'm sorry. Um, Alright, you take it out. Alright, I do the pose that guy's doing in front of the door. Okay. <laughs> Does it do anything? Uh, Does it respect my staff? Respect your uh, staff a tie? Um... So what, you just hold the staff out in, in front of the thing? I like, do whatever pose like he's that? doing. Okay. Um, Maybe so that doesn't work. I tap it on there. There's technically three of him, right? There's the keystone and the clear. two base stones, right? Okay, well, um, sure. It, it does, this, the arch doesn't respond to you just holding the staff out towards it. All right, what if I touch it with it? Touch on it. Touch it? What if I do all three poses? Um, it's all the same pose. Okay. Everyone come do this pose. <laughs> like, everyone, like, <laughs> step forward and do the pose? Is that the plan? Yeah, three of us. Not Ezra. Oh. Okay. More gotcha. bitch. I mean, you can if you want, Ezra. I just don't feel like you want to. Since he's a wolf and... You know, something scared might him of everything. Always. Yeah, Ezra, cast magic on it with your staff. My <laughs> staff doesn't cast magic. All right, well, I'm at a loss. I don't know what else to do, guys. I mean, <clears throat> we seem to have run through. Uh... Besides, all these have really all t taken us to, like, 
or would have taken us to much lower places that we really shouldn't be in right now, so maybe True. we not mess with this until we find its matching portal. It's sibling. Hey, who is that rock thing? Who has what rock? Do I have that? The rock thing. Yeah, what rock thing are you talking about? The descriptors Ta-da. are priceless. Yeah, where's where's your adjectives now, motherfucker? <laughs> the rock the rock thing <laughs> that we got from Werewolf Master. Werewolf Master. Oh, the big key? Oh yeah. This is a big key. stone key. Oh, that's not so we go there, oh you mean that big ass key that probably goes into that door that we couldn't get into? There was no do- key no hole. Oh, oh no door no key. key. I have it. Okay, I have it. <laughs> I was just curious. I don't think it goes here. Okay, so let, let's, let's remember. One of them was like some a, a fucking tree. Which meant we needed to touch it with our wood. And one of them was... Was a it rust armor? Monster. Yeah, it, one, oh, it was one a picture was, of a rust monster? One required a, a sacrifice of metal. But it was a picture of a rust monster, though? I... Uh, I don't remember the picture. I don't either. Um, Ezra. And then the the last one is the mirror, which uses wand charge. A wand charge. Yeah, we would have never guessed that one, actually. Okay. Well. I come. I I I'm, I'm out of ideas. If, most, I, if anyone else wants to try I something. am too. Uh, I, well, I mean, maybe we just remember where it is and we ask someone about it in Skullport. I, I mean, we also have to remember with some of these, they have been. That's. A call up. That's all a uh, wonderful conversation. Oh, is it, Jeremy? Oh, yes, yeah, apparently the things to drop out of head. As you are having this conversation. Ezra, what's your passive perception? God damn it. That's what you get, bitch. <laughs> 23. Bullshit. I can test that greatly. Kethra grabs it and erupts out of Ezra's body. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, yeah, it's me! Did there's, you miss me, Bones? There's a sudden, uh, there's a sudden <laughs> voice out of the darkness behind you all. I believe I owe you money. <laughs> As the oh, damn it, grab it. Give my three drow three. who slaughtered these troglodytes <laughs> come up behind you, intent on doing the exact same thing to you. I need all of you to roll fuck? initiative. I thought we cool with, with the drow. Uh, I thought we were on the like. Terms that collect, weren't bad. Collect your tokens and roll initiative. We have uh, the the alliance and then yet. I need yeah, passive Ezra, perceptions dead. for each one of you. What's your passive perceptions? 18. Okay. Mm, 16. 14. Okay. What's yours, Ezra? Nine. Mm. Oof. The only individual, not surprised. I'm, is so, I'm sorry, so. Basie boy. I think Ooh, Ezra's really? actually nearsighted and hasn't gotten glasses yet. Damn, are you? Oh, that'd be such a good thing. He's like, play as... <laughs> like, got a role play like Mr. Magoo. <laughs> well, he's always got his nose on those damn books. Oh, shit. Of course uh, he's that nearsighted. Might be, I take that back. That's showing my age. What you hear... Yeah, uh, you're all the Actually, shit, Ezra, you, you speak <laughs> Elvin, right? Yeah. What you hear in, is in Elvish, uh, you hear more lambs to the slaughter. Kill them, boys. N- not lamb. Please, no. And then Please, no. we go over to <clears throat> the battle. Break, what? Should we take a break? Oh, yeah, it is a, it is a great time to take a break. We now are in a, a battle. Team. Great team to take a break. We'll take a quick uh, bio break and we will be back. Um, we'll get this com- combat underway and see 
if Ezra dies. Hey, I'm mad. I'm mad. We had a like a like a thing. They shouldn't be attacking us. We got a job for them. Do they look familiar? Do they look like any of the other We guys will find there? out next time. Or not next time. We'll find out in like 15 minutes when we come back from break. See you then. That